More and more companies rely heavily on their data to aid in crucial processes, which leads to an increased importance of data quality in a business. Curious to find out how to efficiently handle this? In this video, we will explain further. Hi, my name is Ryan Geusinger, and together with my colleague, Timothy De Wint, we will showcase how we at McCoy manage data cleansing using our advanced tools like the Smart Data Platform and Address Check. Let's dive right in. A SAP for HANA implementation is an excellent opportunity to check the quality and validity of your data. Today, I have prepared a small fictitious data set which we will run through our Smart Data Platform to check whether our data meets certain criteria set by SAP before we would attempt a migration of this data. This Excel file is meant to represent a list of suppliers that are currently in use. For this example, I have purposely hidden a few mistakes in the file so that these will show up later in our Smart Data Platform and Address Checker. The first tool we will use is Trifecta. The dataset is uploaded to Trifecta and given a so-called recipe. In this recipe, we can set certain rules to alter our data and receive certain warnings or error messages whenever our data does not fit to standard SAP. Let's open the recipe. I'd like to draw your attention to the right-hand side of the screen. In here, we have set certain rules for our data that, that when these are not met, an error message will appear next to the data in a new column. The first field, named QNNR, contains our supplier codes. As you can see, due to the rules that we have set up, Trifecta is able to recognize which codes do not adhere to the format. This supplier here, for instance, has a code which is too long. This code is missing altogether. And these two codes are the same. However, SAP standard requires that all supplier codes are unique, therefore an error message is produced. For all fields in SAP, we can set up specific rules to check whether they meet the correct criteria or not. I'll now open up all the validation checkers. For your convenience, we have listed all error messages at the start of the dataset, corresponding to each supplier code. When this dataset is given back to you, it is easier for you to see at a glance which supplier codes might require a second look or where your source data might need fixing. Let's run through a couple more of our errors. The Name Organization 1 field in SAP standard has a maximum character length of 40. According to this rule, three of our suppliers have names that are too long. Trifecta is able to recognize that house numbers must contain at least one number to be properly considered a house number. These two do not contain any numbers and are therefore highlighted with an error. Our ISO code fields are checked against the database of available ISO codes. This is done by joining the database against our dataset. QQ in this cell here is not an ISO code according to the database and therefore it gives us another error. Last but not least, Trifecta is capable of checking email formats. As you can see here, these two emails do not correspond to the standard email format. In conclusion, Trifecta is an excellent tool that McCoy uses to make standard data checks before attempting a migration to the new system. For those of you with a keen eye, might have seen that our address and postal codes are not 100% correct. I'll hand it over to Timothy to show you how we tackle this problem. At McCoy, we have developed a way to automatically validate your address data. This is done via a custom web page, which allows you to upload your data so it can be checked using the Google Address Database. I will continue the validation started by Ryan by importing the data into our tool. But first, some slight modifications are needed, since only five columns are to be checked out of the complete file. I will now copy the following columns into the load template. The name one, the street and house number, which will be merged into one column, the city, postal code, and country. The load file will then look like this. I will now import the file and run the validation. The tool offers the possibility to output the file either into CSV or Excel format. Also, the template can always be downloaded from the web page so you can populate your data. 
I will now run the tool. After a couple of seconds, the validated output is now ready to be downloaded. I will now open the file. The tool checks the names and addresses and assigns probability scores based on Google results. So the errors that we encountered during the first step of the validation can now be checked and updated if needed. In checking the names, you see different percentages. 100 means that there is a full match between 77 and 60% means that there are some slight differences between the names. If you go even lower from 35 to 33%, you see that the differences are clear. Let's now take a look at the non-matching data of 0%. You see now there are significant differences between the names. In this case, this name is translated. Also, when taking a look at this record, you will notice that Google has retrieved the location name and also a street name instead of the company name. This requires further validation to check if the address is correct. Let's now move on to the addresses. During the previous validation, we've encountered some errors due to missing or incorrect data. In this case, Google has retrieved the proper country code and city. Also, for the record with the missing house number, the proper house number is now retrieved. We will now take a look at the scores. From 88 to 83 percent, there are some slight differences due to Google retrieving the country code instead of the name. If we now check from 33 to 51 percent, we see some data missing. In this case, like the street and some differences between the cities. For the last record, you will see a difference between the incorrect country code and the retrieved country name. All in all, this tool offers an excellent way for companies to improve their data accuracy and to keep their data up to date. This is all for today. Hopefully this episode gave insight in how we tackle data validation and cleansing as part of the data quality process. For more data-related videos, please follow or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Have a nice day.